Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, wherever you are watching from, just worship his name right now, because God is good, we're here to give him glory, and before we proceed with the praise worship, we have a scripture reading, the book of Psalm 100, it says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures to all generations. Come on, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. We worship you, Jesus. We adore you, El Shaddai. Elohim Adonai. Come on, join us as we praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Can we just clap for him?
Hi, this is Tony Mario Gai, and today I want to preach a message I have titled, Power of Expectation. If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried womb. They laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask arms, from those who enter the temple, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for arms. Fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the entrance of your world has got the power to transform our lives and destinies. We pray, Lord, that as the word comes, that every expectation we have tied to your will be made manifest speedily in Jesus' name. Amen. Expectation is the act or state of expecting. The Greek word pro doskeo means an expectation or waiting born of either hope or fear. The Bible tells me in the book of Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22 also tells me, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. The biblical perspective of this scripture gives us an insight of the daily Christian life. There are people who go to God or go to the house of God expecting big things from God. There are also people, even when they're exposed to the word of God, exposed to many things that are good, just can't expect anything good to happen to them, probably because of their life experiences. But I want to tell you that you may have had a very nasty life experience, sometimes painful or controversial, but don't allow the pains of the past to define your future because God has plans for you and these are plans of good and not of evil to prosper you and to give you an expected end. Many people worldwide are poor, sick, weak, insignificant, 
and defeated because they live daily without expecting big things from God. If God gave his best to you when you were not saved, what can he possibly withhold from you now that you're in Christ Jesus? Your perception of God is going to determine your expectation from him. If you see God as a loving, compassionate father, then you can enter boldly into his presence because you know he's your father and he loves you. If you understand the richness of God's grace, the magnitude of his kindness, the depth of his compassion, then there is nothing that will stop you from going boldly to God and asking him to do the things that you want him to do for you. The type of mental picture or spiritual picture you have about God will determine how far you can go with him. Some people see God as a very angry God, a God that punishes without hesitation. But I choose to see God as my father, as your father, as kind, compassionate, gracious, full of mercies. That's my God. And no matter what you're going through, always expect goodness from God. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, the hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. Luke chapter 21, 26 tells me, men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. We are living in times of distress. We're living in times of uncertainty. We're living in times of pain. But don't allow the present darkness to define the light that you carry. When there is much more darkness, when there is darkness, much more light abound. When there is iniquity, grace abounds. The Bible tells me, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver him from them all. I know that the world's in crisis, peril, and all manner of things are happening, but it does not stop God from being God. He's the God of the seas. He's the God of the mountains. He's the God of the earth. He's the God of the heavens. The principalities and powers bow to him. And at the name of Jesus, every knee bows. He can make all things. He can make all grace abound. There's nothing too difficult for him. Even if the world is going to be shaken, your faith cannot be shaken because your faith should be tied to the king of kings. Your faith should be tied to the eternal rock of ages. The Bible makes it clear that those who have their eyes and faith fixed on God shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Don't allow the things you're going through to shake you. Don't allow the distress in Europe to shake you. Don't allow the distress in Africa, North America, South America, Australia, Antarctica, and all parts of the world to shake you. Don't allow the distress in Asia to shake you because we have a God who is compassionate. We have a God who is mighty to save. The Bible tells me, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. I know men's hearts are failing but we are different. We're the sons of God. We can enter boldly to the throne. The throne room of our father because we know he loves us. We are the apple of God's eyes. The Bible tells me in the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 20 according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always. So now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. That's the type of expectation you should have. Your expectation should be about God's goodness, God's greatness. You should have expectation of promotion because the Bible tells us that he loads us daily with benefits. Someone once said, blessed are those who expect nothing, for they shall receive nothing. I'm expectant. I'm expectant of supernatural treasures. I'm expectant of supernatural manifestation of God's grace and gifts and power in my life. I am expectant. 
I'm expectant that this present darkness will give way to light. I'm expectant that a wind, the wind of God is going to blow and goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. I am expectant. I'm expectant that what the enemy meant for evil shall be turned around for good. I am expectant. I'm expecting that the nations in distress will see the light of God shining through, the light of freedom. I'm expectant that every mountain shall be brought low, every crooked path shall be made straight, every valley shall be exalted, and the glory of God shall be revealed in all parts of the world. I am expectant. Don't allow the fear you see to kill your expectation. I'm expectant because faith makes you expectant. Faith confirms your expectation. Faith makes you move boldly because you're expectant. Expectation is an expression of faith backed by conviction, anchored on hope, and inspires positive actions. Faith sees invisible, believes the impossible, confesses the unbelievable, expects the miraculous, and receives the incredible. When a sower goes out to sow, he expects a bountiful harvest. When a fisherman throws his net into the sea, he expects a good catch. Therefore, we should expect abundant favor and promotion from God. Peter was frustrated because he expected a good catch, but got nothing after toiling all night due to his wrong positioning. The Bible tells me in the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you have the knowledge of God, your expectation will be big. When you have the knowledge of God's love, the knowledge of God's goodness, the knowledge of God's kindness, the knowledge of God's protection, then your expectation will not be a fearful expectation of wrath, but an expectation of goodness. That's why the Bible tells me, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's why the Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 91 that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The knowledge of God will give you big expectation. I'm expectant. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. There's something about your expectation coming to pass. It gives you life. It gives you joy. It gives you the ability to say yes. With God, nothing is impossible. Peter suffered setbacks because he did not launch into the deep. Supernatural blessings are obtained through strategic positioning when we step into the deep by faith. Zacchaeus strategically positioned himself where his expectation could be fulfilled. Zacchaeus was shot, and he knew that Jesus was coming to town. And the crowd went out to see the king of kings. Zacchaeus knew he had a disadvantage, but his expectation was so big that he climbed a tree to see Jesus. Your expectation will always make you do impossible things. Do you have faith? Because the Bible tells me that the just shall live by faith. Strategically position yourself in a place where your expectation can be met. Strategically position yourself in a place where your faith will attract the substance. Strategically position yourself in a place where you can feel the favor and heartbeat of God. Strategically position yourself in a place where your dreams will be realized. The setting man who requested help from Peter and John had no identity. It was a liability to his family, friends, and community who carried him daily. This contradicts the principles of God's blessings. We were called to be global assets, not liabilities. Maybe your life right now is one story of struggle. Maybe you've been carried daily by your relatives and your friends. And maybe you just want burden to the community. But your story is going to change. If you can take your eyes from men and look unto Jesus. He's the one that started your destiny. He's the author and finisher of your destiny. 
and he has no abandoned projects. Just look unto him. He will take you from glory to glory. Look unto him. He will give you the desires of your heart. The Bible tells me in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I'll show you. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The totality of this covenant was made manifest when Jesus paid the price. The Bible tells me that Jesus became a curse so that we can be set free. So that the blessings of Abraham can become ours. That means wherever you are, you're supposed to be the head and not the tail. The Bible tells me that if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. God has not changed. Those promises have not changed. That means with God all things are possible. It's time for God's children from the north, east, west, and south to rise up to the needs of the hour. It's time for God's children to occupy the highest position in every spectrum of life. It's time for us to manifest as sons of God. The whole world is waiting for your manifestation. The whole world is waiting for your light to shine. The whole world is waiting for the sons of God to occupy. No wonder the Bible tells me. Before Jesus left, he said, Occupy until I come. When he comes, will he find faith on earth? Because faith moves mountains. Faith part the Red Seas. Faith brings the dead back to life. Faith makes impossible things possible. Although many believers have been divinely elevated by grace to tremendous, beautiful gates, their situations and realities remain ugly through ignorance, unbelief, or lack of faith-based expectations. Through faith in God and intimate knowledge of the scriptures, you can break this oppressive chain. I'm tired of having believers who, although they live in the best cities of the world, their situations remain ugly. You can be in a beautiful marriage and yet your situation continues to remain ugly. You must turn things around. You must get restless and make a difference. You must get restless and put an end to the oppressive yoke of sickness. Get restless. Set yourself free from poverty. Get restless. The Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 37 verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. These are the promises of God. We were not called to beg for bread. We were called to be a blessing to the nations of the world. We were called to make a positive difference. The Bible tells me in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus went through the cross so that your life can change. He was broken. His body was broken so that your body will be preserved. He died young so that you can live to a ripe old age. He was disgraced so that you can walk in glory. He was despised so that you can be accepted by God. He became a criminal so that you can be acquitted of all crimes, spiritual, mental, or physical. It is time for you to step into that place of glory by faith. The expectation of wicked people towards the righteous is mostly evil, but by the grace of God, believers will always defeat these demonic intrigues. The Bible tells me in the book of Isaiah chapter 44, verse 25, who frustrates the signs of the babblers 
and drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes the knowledge foolishness. Today, I speak into your life and your destiny that every conspiracy against you will not stand. Every tongue that rises against you shall be condemned. Every evil expectation against you, your family, your business, will fail. Everyone that speaks evil against you shall be silenced in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells me in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 11, And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Because of his faith, Peter was persecuted and King Herod locked him up. And of course, knowing the wickedness of Herod, who was known for killing people and innocent children, the Jews expected Peter to be killed. But while he was in that prison, the church began to pray. When you pray, the expectation of the wicked fails. When you pray, the expectation of death is destroyed. When you pray, every evil handwriting against your destiny is destroyed. And God sent an angel to set Peter free. Peter gave this testimony that God has finally delivered me from the expectation of the Jewish people who wanted me dead. Today I speak to every child of God, every believer, every expectation that the wicked ones have against you shall not come to pass. For those appointed to death, I declare life. For those appointed to be sick, I declare healing. For those appointed to be demoted, I declare promotion. For those appointed to face shame, I declare grace and glory. I declare that the expectation of the wicked concerning your life will not come to pass. From the scripture we just read, this man who had a problem, who was born crippled, was exposed to a gate. The gate is a legitimate point of entering a desired destination. People suffer when gates are shut against them. Every man needs a key to open his desired gate. Believers have the keys to hidden treasures. When gates are locked against you, your life becomes miserable. In the spirit realm, there are gates. It takes the strong, the bold, and the aggressive, those who know their God, those who have faith, to open these gates. Maybe you are looking for something and you're frustrated. Go to the place of prayer and begin to pray that these gates will be opened. There are also gates that when those gates are opened, trouble comes into your life. There are good gates and there are evil gates. When the gates of hell is opened against the church, trouble, calamities take place. If you see nations that are going through crisis, sickness, epidemic, pandemic, and whatever you want to call them, harvest of death, it simply means that gates have been opened against those nations. Today, I declare and I speak to every continent of the world. The Bible tells me that I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Every gate of hell opened against Africans, I command these gates shut. Every gate opened against Asians, I command these gates shut. The gates of hell opened against Europeans, I command these gates shut. The gates of hell opened against North Americans and South Americans. I command these gates shut. The gates of hell opened against Australians and Antarctica. I command these gates shut in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I speak into the destinies of nations. And I prophetically declare Psalm 24 verse 7. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. 
I declare that in the Philippines, ye gates be lifted up so that Jesus can step into this nation. I declare in Nigeria, ye gates be lifted up so that Jesus can step into that country. I declare in all parts of the world, gates be lifted up and let the King of glory come. Let him come with power. Let him come with healing. Let him come with might. Let him come with wealth. Let him come with fame. Everyone that has been struggling, I declare that divine gates are open for you right now. Divine gates are open. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. There is a certain day in your life that when gates are open, your story changes. The Bible tells me that in a certain year, in the year of Noah, and that day all the fountains of the great deep burst open and it began to rain. I speak to the destinies of men and women in this place that let the great fountain burst open and let the rain of righteousness flow like an ever flowing stream. Let marital doors be open. Let financial doors be open. Let health flow to nations of the world. I speak to the countries and the nations of the world. This evil wind, this wind wind of sickness and misery and death I declare that your reign is over and I prophetically speak and I release the east wind of God let it bring healing to nations of the world when the east wind of God blew God saved Israel when the east wind of God blew manna and quail fell from heaven when the east wind of God blew many things began to happen I speak right now there is a moving there is a shift in the spirit realm there is a paradigm shift the dry bones are coming alive the economies of the nations of the world are being healed right now I speak to the pharaohs of the world let my people go let the era of death be over let death in America stop let death in Africa stop let death death in Europe stop. Let death in Asia stop. Let death in all parts of the world stop. Receive life. The Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. But Jesus came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Receive life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God gave us the mandate to possess the gates of our enemies. So you have a right. You have the power as a believer, to possess the gates of your enemies. The Bible tells me that wherever the soles of your feet shall tread upon, you shall take for a possession. The Bible tells me in the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 17, Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. I declare that everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice, you shall possess the gates of your enemies. We need the keys of the kingdom to enjoy dominion on earth. Because if you do not have those keys, it's going to be difficult for you to enjoy the concept of dominion. The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew 16, 19, and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I declare from this moment that sickness you're bound. Death you're bound. Hades you're bound. And I declare men and women free. Free from sickness. Free from poverty. Free from distress. Free from disgrace. It is your time to shine. It is your time to reign. It is your time to manifest as sons of God. So how can you realize your expectations? I'm going to give you five keys, five ways to realize your expectations. One, walk by faith. Faith is the key to your destiny. The Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Romans 1, 17 tells me the just shall live by faith. 2. Confess what you believe and expect to receive. Blind Bartimaeus expected Jesus to restore his sight so he cried out to our Savior 
even when others try to discourage him. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So if you love life, if you love goodness, if you love promotion, then use your tongue to confess what you expect. Don't confess your doubt. Don't confess your fears. Don't confess your, your disappointment. Confess what you expect. Confess the good things. Confess your righteousness in Christ Jesus. Confess that you're the son of God and you're the daughter of God. Confess that you are an overcomer. The Bible makes it clear. Let the weak say, I am strong. It didn't say, let the weak say, I'm weak. Even when you feel weak, declare that I am strong. Even if you feel broke, declare that I am rich. Even if you feel sick, declare that by the stripes of Jesus, I have been made whole. That's the right confession. Three, don't doubt your expectations. The Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. God never fails. Your politicians can fail you, your friends can fail you, but God never fails. If God started this thing in your life, it's going to bring you to an end. Keep your focus. Look onto the big picture. For look unto Jesus. If you look unto men or the circumstances around you, failure is inevitable. Jesus is the answer. The Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin we so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look at the picture ahead of you. Don't waver. Don't be afraid. Hold on to your faith. Look unto Jesus. He's the author and finisher of your faith. The Bible tells me in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The Bible tells me that by his stripes we've been made whole. That should be your expectation. Don't go to an office expecting to be demoted. Don't go to a place expecting to be rejected. Don't go into a relationship expecting the relationship, especially the godly ones, to fail. Don't go into marriage expecting your marriage to end up in divorce. Don't set up a business expecting the business to fail. We are unbeatable. We cannot be stopped. There is the power, there is a power that works in us. It is the power of God. It works in us, through us, for us. We must begin to manifest as sons of God. I do not expect to fail. I do not expect to be disgraced. I expect the goodness of God. I expect the mercy of God. I expect the kindness of God. I expect to walk in supernatural power. I expect to lay hands on those who are sick and for those who want to be made whole. I expect the dead to come back to life when I preach the gospel. I expect him to grow from glory to glory. I expect the word of God to spread like fire. I expect the fire of God to flow in my body like fire from heaven. I expect to walk in divine righteousness. I expect to be a manifestation of the holiness of God. I expect to be a manifestation of the character of God. I expect to be like God because in him I live, in him I dwell, in him I have the totality of my being. I expect to rise above every weakness. I expect to carry the presence of God wherever I go. I expect the nations to turn to God. I expect revival to flow in all parts of the world. I expect the church of God to become a glorious army, a nation of kings and priests. I expect revival fire to flow. I expect the next generation to carry Jesus in their hearts. I expect the laws of God to be established in the hearts of men. I expect the gospel to move from nation to nation. I expect that big things are coming. Tell your neighbor the best is yet to come. Eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, neither has it entered 
the heart of man what God wants to do for those who believe. Do you believe? Finally, five, do something about your expectation. The woman with the issue of blood pressed for her healing. The Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard lest we drift away. The reason sometimes people fall into doubt is because they don't give heed to godly expectations. They focus on ungodly expectations. They focus on their fears. They focus on things that ain't right. We must imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It is my conviction that every promise God has given to you you will see it in your lifetime because God does not fail. Jesus never fails. Finally, James chapter 2 verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Christianity is not for the weak, but it protects the weak. Christianity makes us strong. We are believers. Because we believe everything God has spoken concerning us. So today I urge you, don't look at the things that are perishable. Don't look at the things that are challenging you. Look at the greatness of your God. Look at how big your God is. Because God who started this thing in your life is able to finish what he has started. I'm fully persuaded that your expectations shall come to pass. Don't give up on your dreams. Giving up on your dreams is simply doubting God. Keep expecting. As a believer, it's your duty to expect. And it's God's obligation to perform your expectation. When you expect, God is obliged to perform. When you expect, God moves. Expect God to move in your life. Expect your promotion. Expect your elevation. Expect God's grace to be made manifest in your life. God bless you. Father, today I just want to lift all the nations of the world before you. While the skeptics are expecting death and destruction, I expect your redemption power to be at work. I expect your goodness. I expect your mercy. I know that your anger is for a while, but your mercy is for a lifetime. Lord, I pray that your mercy will be seen in America, in South America, in North America, in Africa, in Asia, in Australia, in Europe, in Antarctica. Let the harvest of death end. Let there be a new era, a new chapter of people turning back to God. A chapter of life, peace, and restoration to all nations of the world through the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, today, just as I prayed for the woman who had COVID, and within a few days she was healed of COVID with the medical results, I pray for all those who have COVID-19 online, all those under the influence of the sound of my voice, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I know I have no power to heal, but I know that you have all the power to heal. So today, I invoke the name of Jesus and I declare that whatever disease you're carrying in your body, cancer, arthritis, heart disease, COVID-19, wherever you are, let the power of God touch you right now. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And for some people who are not yet saved and you've had this frightening expectation of going to hell, you can end it right now by giving yourself to Jesus Christ. So if you're not yet saved, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. 
you died to set me free. Today, I expect you to save me because you've already saved me. All I need to do is to believe. With my heart, I believe. And with my mouth, I confess all my sins. Come into my life and become my personal Lord and Savior. If you've just prayed that prayer, it simply means you are now part of God's supernatural army and a member and citizen of the greatest kingdom that man has ever known. You are now part of the body of Christ. Simply means you're protected and all your expectation tied to Christ and God will never be cut off. I bless all our viewers online. May the Lord cause you to grow from glory to glory and cause your expectations to be established. Thank you and see you online next Sunday. God bless you. Hello. We hope you are blessed with today's message. As we're approaching the start of the Burr month, there is no denying how loving and faithful God has been this year. We may have experienced trials and tribulations with our health, our finances, our businesses, but as we stay faithful, He continues to provide in every aspect of our lives. Proverbs 3 verse 9 to 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. How honored God will be when we give at a time of lack and need. Now is the best time and opportunity to show God how much trust and faith we have in Him. May your offering be a sweet aroma to Him. There are different ways you could give online. You can give through credit card via PayPal or GCash and Instapay as shown on your screen. Now, I'd like to welcome you to repeat after me and confidently declare these words over our offerings. I am a child of God. I am an heir to His kingdom. I am rich in faith. I am abundant in peace, I am provided for, and I lack nothing. If you have any prayer requests or just need someone to talk to, we are here for you. Just scan the code on the screen and a member of our team will pray with you. Happy Sunday and hope to see you again online next week. Bye!